the Sunday. Um, today I wanted to talk about the meaning of crisis in our lives and um, that it's a, an invitation to, to change, to transform. It's, it's a redirection. However, most of us resist uh, anything that, is, that we call crisis because it usually has to do with loss, right? Losing something. Losing something that affects our self-concept, losing something that affects our, uh, our identity, whether it's losing a person or losing an economic status or losing um, something that we hold dear, something that was important to us, something that, has, that our self-concept depended on. Uh, recently I had found out an interesting way to look at karma where karma is viewed as emotional charge that's attached to a belief about what is happening to us. And I find that very, very interesting because when I was going through my own suffering associated with the crisis in my life, I have come to face some of my beliefs about what was happening to me, which were formed in my childhood. And today I know that uh, our consciousness, yes, is formed at childhood, but our the conclusions that we form about life and people in it in childhood is not very realistic. It's very skewed, it's very limited, it's very simplistic, and yet that is the, the emotional charge that then uh, haunts us for the rest of our lives. So we believe that there are certain things that are happening in life that are good, and we welcome them and we try to control events in life so that it's only going in the direction of what we perceive as good. And we avoid everything we can trying to control life once again to avoid and to escape feelings that we consider bad. So pain, suffering, loss, grief is what feels um, difficult for us and we do everything we can to avoid it. So that's how addictions are formed as well, of course. What I'm learning about these feelings as, uh, such as pain and, and suffering, it's actually not so much the feeling itself, it's not the actual sensation of these feelings that are difficult, it's once again the emotional charge, the story behind these feelings that we create, that we uh, get access to when we feel these feelings. Because when you, through somatic healing that I offer in my, in my coaching sessions, when we break down uh, the, the feeling, the, the emotion that we're going through to a sensation, uh, removing the story that we have around it to the actual building blocks of, of the sensations in our bodies, it completely loses its, its charge and it becomes less frightening and much more palatable. And this is how we can regulate our emotions. But most of us don't have these skills and uh, the way we go through life is trying to minimize uh, these uh, difficult, unruly emotions that we don't know how to process, that scare us so much because they remind us of something in the past. and. Um, and we try to remove people or events from our lives in order to avoid feeling this way. So um, it's important to understand though that we're here in this human experience in order to feel everything, the full range of what it means to be human. The good, the bad and the ugly as I, as I often say, all of it, right? What we, what we feel is good, what we feel is bad, all of it because in fact in life nothing is bad. It's all good. Pain is necessary, as I often give as an example, for example, if we step on the glass while walking barefoot, that pain acts as a signal for us to pay attention to the wound and take care of it. If we didn't have pain at that moment, we would just bleed to death. So pain has a function in our lives and often it is a portal of transformation the emotional pain often leads us to look at where it's coming from, to find the source of the wound and attend to it. And very often our wounds are from childhood. And very often when we attend to it, we realize that it's our belief about it, 
So karma, right, the emotional charge that is associated with the belief is actually not true. And we can change our karma if we can see and change our beliefs about life and what is happening in it. So once again, coming back to the crisis, a meaning of crisis in our lives is an invitation to look at our beliefs about life. Where have we tried to control what is uncontrollable? Where have we lived with the belief that, for example, death is bad? Death, birth are uh, the same, uh, different signs of the same coin. Life is not possible without birth, just like it's not possible without death. So where our beliefs about life are the cause for our suffering. Um, so crisis, a crisis is an invitation to re-evaluate how we live our lives, what we believe about it, and uh, step into the ex more expanded conscious awareness about what is true and live from this more realistic um, view on life, what is possible in it, and what is welcome, and, um, and in fact that all of it is welcome, that we're here for the full human experience. And it's only when we live in restriction, in attempt to control, in attempt to uh, limit our experience to what we, we consider good, which is not even um, the truth of, of our experience, that we suffer. Um, so, some food for thought for you this Sunday, as we are uh, in exactly a year since we are in this um, global pandemic, which has restricted our movements and our um, habitual ways of living in so many ways. Um, and I had found myself very much in frustration uh, this last week that it's been a year and I wanted to, to have certain of my liberties back. Uh, and it was interesting for me to observe my own resistance to what is and how much of our own suffering comes from that resistance of the present moment, resistance of what is wanting it to be otherwise. So uh, let me know if this uh, resonates with your own experience and if you have any questions and um, think about the fact that karma is not a punishment but actually our own emotional attachment to certain beliefs that were formed about life that are not even realistic. So um, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And I will talk to you next week, next Sunday.